Okay, so let's look at what Theresa May thinks she's achieved with this Brexit agreement, starting with, of course, immigration. And I've always had a very clear sense of the outcomes I wanted to deliver for people in these negotiations. Control over our borders by bringing an end to free movement once and for all. But then she says this. Immigration will continue to make a positive contribution to our national life. Which is odd because it means that they know that immigration is a net benefit to our economy, but they still want to cut it down. There are only two explanations for that. Either they know it's a benefit, but they as a government have failed in their responsibility to ensure that benefit is felt by everyone, not just the people at the top, or it's racism. Because if you know that people from other countries are providing a net benefit to your country, yet you still want to cut it down, that means you have a problem with people from other countries. It's that simple. Instead of a system based on where a person is from, we will have one that is built around the talents and skills a person has to offer. It should lead to greater opportunity for young people in this country to access training and skilled employment. When I heard this, I was slightly more colourful in my language. Uh, I'll just say now, no it bloody won't. The immigration system which they're talking about means you can only come here if you're making over £30,000. So what happens when other EU countries do the same to Brits? My first job after uni was working in customer services in a hotel in France. I was not making £30,000. The thing about free movement is, it's free. It is a right given to every single man, woman and child born in this country. And we're replacing it with an elitist system designed to make it so that only people earning in the top brackets should have the right to explore opportunities in the world beyond our borders. That's Brexit Britain. Control of our money. Sorry, control of our money? You mean like the 40 billion we're about to give to the EU budget, even though we'll no longer have a say in how they actually spend it? Or do you mean the money we currently contribute to the EU so we can work on things together as 28 countries sharing the cost that will now be put on the UK taxpayers to deal with alone? Control of our laws. Okay, there you are simply lying. For the next two years, for the transition period, we will be bound by the rules of the EU, but would have given up our dominant position in setting those rules. That is a simple loss of control. And even after that, the backstop where we stay within the EU's common trade policy, which we cannot choose by ourselves to get out of, the EU, now of course without us, will be deciding our trade policy. That is not taking back control. Getting us out of those EU programmes that do not work in our interests like the Common Agricultural Policy and the Common Fisheries Policy. Okay, the Common Fisheries Policy has its problems, but the quotas for that are set by the National Fisheries Ministers. And the Common Agricultural Policy, again, has its problems, but the UK government keeps allocating funding to the largest landowners. But let's look at the other programmes which apparently don't work in the British interest. For example, the EU Medicines Agency, which our NHS desperately relies upon, or the European Chemicals Agency, which makes sure that the chemicals in our food are safe for you to eat. We could talk about Europol because of that pesky little thing called international crime. The European Food Safety Agency, the European Banking Authority, the European Centre for Disease Control, the European Agency that monitors drug addiction. All these things that work for the British people are apparently not in the British interest. Nissan in Sunderland, Jaguar Land Rover in Coventry, Alexander Dennis in Falkirk. These firms support tens of thousands of jobs all rely on parts being able to flow across borders to support just-in-time supply chains. And then finally she makes the point about manufacturing in places like Sunderland. Places where 35,000 jobs depend on a factory that sends 75% of its cars to mainland Europe because we're in the EU system. And she admits that they rely on frictionless, free-flowing trade across that border. But that only happens if you have the same rules on either side. So if we are bound by the rules of the EU, but give up our say in those rules, again, that is giving up control. The only way that we, the British people, can take back control is by voting on that deal.